Hey guys, Cole here. Just to say that if you like our content, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the future episodes. Now, on with the show. Welcome back to the Weekly Wheel. As always, I'm your host, Mel. On this week's show, we talk about some new Nintendo bugs, an old game being brought back from development hell, and GameStop's financial troubles. All this and more on this spin of the Weekly Wheel. Piranha Plant was added to Smash as DLC January 29th. Many players tried him out in the regular Smash mode, but those who decided to play him in the All-Star mode were met with quite a shock. Corrupted save files. Many of those affected took to Twitter quickly to shed light on the issue. The Super Smash Bros. Ultimate News Twitter account issued a tweet saying, there have been multiple reports of Piranha Plant corrupting save files of those who use him in all-star mode. Please be weary of this while playing the game. However, it really isn't just Piranha Plant that's causing the issue. Fans have reported using Piranha Plant in regular Smash, and even the Mii Sword Fighter or Duck Hunt in the Century Smash mode had corrupted save files. It is unsure yet if a patch was released to fix this, so be wary on choosing your main. Piranha Plant. week's game highlight, we look at a 20-year-old game. The Nintendo 64 was released in 1996 and had a ton of fantastic games. But like most consoles, some games that were planned for the N64 were sadly cancelled and never released. The 1997-98 to hack and slash game called Dragon Sword was never completed. It was originally being developed by Team Storm, who also developed Glover. A beta for the game was released in 2010, but that was the last time we heard from the game. However, on Wednesday, it was announced that Pico Entertainment has purchased the rights to the game along with all of the original codes. This leaves many gamers hoping that Dragon Sword will finally see the light of day. Team Pico has some history with restoring old titles that were lost to the ages. Last year in 2018, they resurrected the game 40 Winks for the N64 after a Kickstarter was made for the game. So we know Dragon Sword is in good hands. PC players have a ray of hope as a famous modder steps up to the big leagues. Last month it was announced that modder Peter Durante Toman has officially launched his own PC porting company. Peter's first gained notoriety when he fixed the abysmal PC port for the original Dark Souls way back in 2011. He unlocked the frame rate, boosted the graphics, and made keyboard controls actually work, but he hasn't stopped there. Over the years, he's continued to fix other PC ports, which all accumulated in his new studio, PH3. PH3 specializes itself with PC ports for console games and already has a few secret clients that Peter isn't allowed to name. PH3 isn't looking to get too much on their plate because they're focused on quality, but hopefully the sun shines on these porters. Long may the sun shine. <laughs> but do you want games made for the PC? Humble Monthly is a curated bundle of games sent to your inbox every month. Subscribe for $12 a month to immediately unlock Earth Defense Force 4.1, Warhammer Vermitide, and Cult of Simulator with more to come. Build the ultimate game library, every game is yours to keep, cancel anytime. A special link is in the description down below. In what could be considered good or bad news, GameStop has ceased all efforts at selling the company. The company initially began looking for buyers back in June 2018. As they've stated in a blog post, GameStop's board has now terminated efforts to pursue a sale of the company due to the lack of available financing on terms that would be commercially acceptable to a prospective acquirer. GameStop's business model has struggled in recent years with the rise of digital distribution of games and content. GameStop's announcement has caused their stock to drop 25% to $11.24 USD. They reported while the company remains open for business, the future of retail gaming is shifting more and more into a digital buyer system. For more on this as the story progresses, stay tuned to Game Wheel. Well, that ends the spin of the Weekly Wheel. 
As always, if you like what you see, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow our Facebook page. If there's something you'd like to see on the show, leave a comment down below and let us know what you thought of this week's stories. And special thanks to the Infinity Forge for letting us use their facility. See you guys next time.